Hello everyone and welcome to science class. Today we are going to cover the topic heating and cooling. My dear students, do you know when you touch something hot and your senses immediately tell you to pull your hand away? Why? Because your hand feels that something hot is around you. So, what is hotness? Hotness is about the amount of heat energy an object has. The hotness can be best understood by this example. Consider a spark from a fire may be very hot, but it will not hurt very much. Why? Because it does not contain much heat energy. It means it has less heat energy. So that's why it does not hurt you so much. And on the other side, a cup of tea may not be very hot. But it can still burn the tongue because it contains a lot of heat energy. So that's why we say hotness is about the amount of heat energy an object has. Come to the next topic that is temperature and heat. So what is heat and temperature? First see the definition of heat. Heat is the transfer of energy from a higher temperature object to a lower temperature object. For example, when you touch a hot pan that been on the stove, the heat from the pan is transferred to your hand. So this is the example of heat transferring from a hotter object to a cooler object. Heat is actually represented in the form of some units. So which units? Normally it is measured in joules or kilojoules. So these are called the units of the heat. The next one is temperature. Temperature is a measure of how hot or cold something is. It is measured in degrees Celsius. One more thing about temperature is that it can also be measured by an instrument called thermometer. So this instrument is normally used to measure temperature. Now the next point is effect of temperature on different substances. What are these substances? These are solids, liquids and gases. My dear students, you already know that solids, liquids and gases are made up of tiny particles. These particles are moving about all the time. They are not still their position. The more energy the particles have, the more they move about. The opposite is also true. As they lose energy, they move about less. As a solid cools, heat energy is removed. So, when the heat energy is removed, the particles will move more and more slowly until they stop moving altogether. Now, the temperature at which the particles stop moving together is called absolute zero or absolute temperature. So absolute zero or the absolute zero or absolute temperature is the temperature at which a material has no heat energy. Now next topic is kinetic theory. What is kinetic theory? The movement of particles is affected by temperature. As you know that. So the higher the temperature, the faster particles move. This is known as the kinetic theory. So the kinetic theory explains how particles move in solids, liquids and gases. In a solid, each particle is held closely with each other. Solids do not contain a lot of heat energy. So the movement of particles will be less in solids. In liquids, particles are able to move by rolling over each other. They have more heat energy than solids. So they have more freedom to move around. In gases, particles move very quickly and are free to move in any direction. So gases have most heat energy than solids and liquids. My dear students, now we understand the concept of different behavior of different substances. So the kinetic theory explains how these substances behave. Starting from the first point, which is called melting. 
what is actually melting and how does it occur? Melting is the conversion of solid into liquid by providing a heat. For example, if you will provide a heat to the ice cube, what happened to it? The ice cube melts into the water. So which form is this ice cube? It is a solid form of water. And after providing heat, the ice cube will be melt. And due to the melting, it is converted into the liquid state. So what is basically melting? It is a conversion of solid into the liquid state. Now the next process is evaporation. So what is evaporation? Evaporation is a process in which a substance changes from a liquid state to a gaseous state at a temperature below its boiling point. For example, when you heat a pot of water on the stove, you will notice that as the temperature rises, bubbles form and the water starts to turn into vapor. So what are these vapors? Basically, these vapors are the form of gas. So what happens during evaporation? In evaporation, liquid changes into gas by providing heat. Next process representing the behavior of the substances to kinetic theory is called condensing. So, what is condensing? It is a process in which a substance changes from a gaseous state to a liquid state. Basically, condensation is the opposite of evaporation. So what is actually the difference between evaporation and condensation? Only the reversible process is occurring in between them? No. Actually, in condensation, the gas change into the liquid when heat is not involved. For example, when you boil water in a kettle, as the water heats up, it turns into water vapors which is in a gaseous state. Now, when you remove the heat, what will happen? These water vapors cools down and it loses heat energy. So this, cause, so, so this causes water vapors change back into liquid water. This is the condensation. Now the next phenomena is freezing. Freezing is the process in which a substance changes from a liquid state to a solid state as it loses heat energy. Perhaps the most common example of freezing is the transformation of liquid water into solid ice. If you will keep the glass of water in a refrigerator for cooling it down, what happens to the glass of water? The molecules of water come closer to each other. So due to the less and no more heat energy, the water will freeze and it converts into the solid that is the ice. The process representing the behavior of the substances to kinetic theory is called conservation of mass. This is the last process. In this process, in these change of state, only the behavior of the particles changes. The actual particles remain the same all the time. Therefore, the total mass of the substance never changes. For example, when ice melts into water, the mass of the ice is conserved in the water. The particles in the ice are still present in the water, but they have undergone a phase change from a solid to a liquid. The kinetic energy of the particles increases as they gain more freedom to move, but the total mass remains the same. So this is the conservation of mass. My dear students, this is all about the heating and cooling. I hope you enjoy the lecture. Please subscribe the channel for more learning videos. Thank you.